Okay, this is a lecture on flowing and then a flowing drill. Get hyped. Flowing, you should do it. These are two examples of what PF flows look like. The first one is something that's been done on Google Sheets. The second one is something that's been done on paper. Um, either way, each side is flowed in a different color. There's a new column or section for every speech. Both of these are only half flows, so there's another sheet of paper, another like spreadsheet. With the opponent's case, it just makes it a lot easier to organize. And you can always, like, a response to an argument is going to be written where the, like, next to where the argument originally was, regardless of what order the speaker went in. And, yeah, it's basically just a way of following the arguments that are made in debate. Why should you do it? Um, there are three reasons why I personally find them helpful. The first is to keep track of arguments in a debate and whether they're responded to, so you know you're not missing anything huge, like any huge attacks on your case. or You just want to make sure your opponent isn't giving the judge anything they can still win on. Um, the second reason is to make sure you, your judges, and your opponents all know your, what argument you're referring to. It's easier to say their first response to our second contention than it is to go into detail and respond to, like describe their argument before you respond to it. This just saves time. And the third reason why is so you can save your notes on the round and re-give speeches because while you might be able to remember everything that's going on in the round itself, I would doubt that you're actually able to remember everything that's going on, but even if you're super talented, you're probably going to forget it after the round ends, but you still want to be able to re-give speeches and give better speeches. So it's like when you're looking back, it's important that you have everything written down to jog your memory. So. This is a bit of an unpopular opinion, but I'm the one who made this lecture, so I will share it. Um, you should flow differently depending on the round you're in. In general, you should try and flow the way that your judge is, because you want to have a similar perception of the arguments to your judge as you do. So that means in flow or tech rounds, you're going to be taking notes like a person in a courtroom who's transcribing anything. I forgot the word for that. But you want to get everything down. And you also want to be able to see what your opponents are responding to, what they're putting a lot of ink on, what they're probably going to go for. Because your judge is probably getting the vast majority of this down too. So if they catch something you don't, that's just an easy way for them to vote for your opponents. So you want to make sure that you're not missing anything. But if you're in a more lay or like a flay round, I guess, you're going to want to take notes like you're in class because a lay judge isn't going to be writing down everything your opponents say. They're going to be writing down A, what your opponents are making a big deal of, and B, what the judge personally likes about their speech. So if you can keep track of what you think your opponents are making a big deal of and what your judge seems to be responding to really likely, you and your judge are going to be closer to like being on the same page for this round, which is going to help you a lot to connect with them because I know like I've been in a lot of rounds a lot of lay rounds where I've won purely because I've conceded all of the responses on my case but like my partner and I like we just respond to like the big picture behind my opponent's case meanwhile my opponents sound a lot more nitpicky when they're just talking about one small argument but in a flow round that one small argument would have mattered a lot more yeah so Here's just like another rundown of the basics of flowing. This is a sample affirmative constructive, negative rebuttal, affirmative summary on the Belt and Road topic. Um, this, these are all pretty stock arguments. There are different colors to differentiate each side. The neg case would be on a different piece of paper. Each speech is getting their own column. Um, arrows for things like extinction show it's being pulled through. Um, I give each piece of evidence its own like little paragraph, I guess. So I write down the author's name, I underline it, I write a brief description of what that author says, and then if my opponents decide they're reading two links, so in this case the AF decide to read transit times and free trade agreements, I just realized I wrote free trade agreements, agreements, please ignore that. Um, yeah, so those would be separate areas, and the reason I did that is so I can restart my numbering, because let's say I'm the neg, and in rebuttal I read a turn and then a D-link, but then I want to make it clear that the next turn only responds to the free trade agreements argument and not the transit times argument. I want that to be really clear, so that's why I also restart my numbering. And, yeah. So, some people flow on paper, some people don't. There are reasons for this. I personally flow on paper because I really, really, really like the fact that the formatting is more flexible than if you're on a spreadsheet where you have to, like, navigate a bunch around. Um, a tip though, if you're following on a spreadsheet, in Google Sheets I believe you go to format, wrap, text. This just makes it so your, like, each cell on the sheet is able to contain more text. It doesn't just like run off into the distance. Yeah. 
Um, but another pro about falling on papers, you don't have to worry about your laptop crashing or anything dying because, like, I don't know, your pen could run out of ink. That happened to me in a round once. Just bring extra pens to round. Um, another pro about flowing on paper is you can use your own shorthand and symbols a lot easier. So I sometimes draw a lot of weird squiggles that you wouldn't really be able to do if it was on a big laptop where you're limited to the keyboard. But there are some downsides to flowing on paper. The biggest one is that it's not accessible to everyone. Some disabilities make it really hard to write in the, or it's comparatively easier to type. Obviously, if that is your situation, don't feel ashamed for flowing on a laptop and yeah, just in general, don't like make fun of people for the way they flow. Everyone finds something that works for them. This is just me helping you get to that point. It's also a lot harder to store paper flows over time. I have like a really big box in my room with a bunch of paper flows and I would not recommend it. Like if I had it all in a GDocs folder, that'd be a lot easier. It's also harder to share flows because you actually have to physically give someone the paper or take a picture of it. But honestly, at this point, I was just running out of ideas for cons. Like, <laughs> I'm literally out like your ink could smudge. But, like, if you don't use a Pilot G2 and you use an actually good pen, then it won't be a problem. Yeah, so you'll want to focus, as you do more rounds, on developing a shorthand for flowing. So, things you're going to want to consider is how you're flowing a case. Um, you can use numbers or letters for different links and warrant structures. Um, some people just do L for link, W for warrant. Um, I, or like I for impact. I use exclamation marks for impact because I feel like it's more fun. Yeah, just find what works for you and stick to it because then it's always easier for you to read later on. Um, another important thing is shortening common jargon. Um, I use T for turn, DA for disad. O slash W for outweigh. These are all pretty intuitive, but like maybe D links. I you know some people do like DL, right? Or just write the response itself. And this is so you can save a lot of time because obviously outweigh is a seven letter or six letters longer than just writing O W. Um, you also want to mark important things for you and your speeches. So you, this can either be starring questions that you want to ask and cross or like notating them in some different ways. It's often a lot easier to just write a star as you're following your opponent's case, being like, hey, I want to ask about this, then write down the actual full question. Another thing is if you give a voting issue summary, you might want to take a highlighter and just find a way to mark different orders if you're giving a speech and you're not going to go top down on both sides. Yeah. So here's how you practice flowing, and it is really important to practice flowing because if you think about it, you're just using your hand muscles, and those can deteriorate over time. But Thankfully, you can keep them in shape, something I'm not doing. I'm just giving this lecture instead of actually doing drills myself. So yeah, you can listen to rounds on PF videos and flow them, or just any YouTube channel which uploads debate rounds. Or better yet, you can actually watch practice rounds and rounds at tournaments. This is especially good because rounds at tournaments are going to be a lot more similar to like where you're debating. So you're going to see like what's more successful there. Um, you can also watch practice rounds, or yeah, you can listen to TV and podcasts at double speed and try and take notes if you're just like looking to entertain yourself. You can practice fast writing and typing in general. And I'm going to read two cases now as fast as I can to actually help with this.